Okay. I think we're good. Good morning. Let's see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I don't know. We still have a minute left. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Yay. Okay. Progress. Commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I hate computers. I seriously am just gonna yeah. actually. There you go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now we're good. Good morning, good morning. everyone. Let's Thank see. you for joining us. Mm -hmm. This is our morning talk show, Roots, Shoots, and Coffee, where we go over indoor house plants, outdoor gardening, and coffee. Coffee. <laughs> yep, so I'm Kirsten. And I'm Haley. Mm -hmm. And we'll be your host. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for everyone that's uh, leaving a countdown in the section of yeah. <laughs> minutes, too. I like the excitement. Um, but, yeah. So, we're excited to see you guys again. I hope you guys are liking the segment. And we're going to talk a little bit about seed starting. Um, I will say with houseplants, I don't have a ton of experience with it because I've seen so many people post about how they purchased seeds online for houseplants, like rare houseplant seeds, and they got ripped off and it was something else. So I'm kind of scared, but I am uh, growing from bulbs, houseplants that came off of an um, alocasia that I have, and that's a new experience for me. So this will be a little bit more about um, outdoor gardening in this sense, but yes. If but it's not that your indoor plants can't give off seeds. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It is I a little have, rare, but yeah. Yeah, I had that snake plant that was my great grams, and um, that gave off seeds last year, I think. And I haven't attempted to plant them. I'm not that brave yet, um, but it's uh -huh. on the list to do. Um, so, I mean. Oh, it's definitely possible. Yeah. Um, especially if you're collecting from your own plants, you know what you're getting. <laughs> so, Fair. Yes, Fair. so it's a lot better. But um, I do want to maybe trick Luke or you into helping me grow some rare house plants if I can find a good deal on seeds and see what happens. Where would you get them from? Yeah. Is there like a house plant seed vendor? Um, honestly, Facebook groups. That sounds sketchy, but I have good luck. sketchy, have you? <laughs> yes, um, I have good luck with that. But there are some different sellers, I think, that do sell along with their houseplant collection, okay. so we'll see. Because, I mean, indoor and outdoor, you have to be careful with where you're buying seeds from. Mm -hmm. I mean, just oh, for true. the invasive species type thing and maybe not buy from... And as I always say with Etsy my shameless... Uh, <laughs> no, I love Etsy, but oh, okay. I mean, there are problems, but yeah. I wouldn't trust Amazon. But what I will say, uh, we sell seeds... <laughs> I always have a shameless plug, and Haley's always like, <laughs> but anyways. Oh, over here, they know. <laughs> anyways. Um, but remember, you guys can put, they know. You guys can put in your questions, too. Do you guys have any questions about starting seed? Like, yeah. All caps, mixes? guys. It makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. for us. Um, um, living for Jesus. Not sure how I got on this live, but it looks interesting. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, Let's grow some plants. Jesus loves plants. Anyways. Uh, hello. Angie. Malaysia. Wow. It is 10.30 p.m. in Malaysia. Interesting. Hi, Angie. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Rodent turf. Be careful when buying rare seeds. Absolutely. Very I mean, true. Just, just know where. Make sure you're buying from a reputable source. Regardless. Just... It's a good choice overall. Hi from Nashville. Hi, Jeffrey. Okay. Yeah. My comments aren't working, but She's like... <laughs> catching up over here. What kind of coffee do we drink? Oh. Well, what do you have? You're, she's way fancier than me. This morning she was talking about like drip coffee. I mean, I know what French press is, but she was Drip coffee is just the coffee too. that's I like... Know, but I've never heard prepared. anyone call it drip coffee. You just well, sound fancier mm. when you talk about coffee. And I'm like, I just want a coffee. Uh, well, <laughs> I I got... We went to a local coffee shop this morning. Actually, yeah, we haven't had this one on the yes, live yet. Yes. Um, Exquisite Corpse. It's a local shop downtown. Great on Main Street. Great owners. Nathaniel and Maggie. Little shout out to them. Um, they're really nice people. And yeah, so I got the Sumatra blend coffee with a little bit of cream, a little bit of sugar, and highly recommend. Oh, it's a favorite. Mm -hmm. Is it just like the beans are from somewhere different? <clears throat> um, 
I believe they do roast their own coffee. I think they also get some coffee from Lexington Coffee Company that's roasted in house too. Oh, that's so cool. it is kind of nice. Yeah. Gotcha. You just making a mess over there? I She's am. Spilling I'm coffee. casually trying to be Here we sneaky about it. Anyways, what are you drinking? Coffee. <laughs> Uh, chai. You guys, I we like love chai. it. I've been like on a chai kick lately. It's so it's not technically coffee. Well, just kidding. Mm-hmm. I get a dirty chai, so there is some espresso in it. Yes, there you so go. it is coffee. It still counts. <laughs> God's family <laughs> garden says I'm into white chocolate caramel latte. Mm. That does sound good. Yeah, I gotta does. be in the right mood for some. I'm not huge on white chocolate though. No, I, I love like dark, dark I, all chocolate. All chocolate is good, but dark chocolate is the best. Yeah, for sure. Good, good morning, morning from Grand Rapids. Beach to it. <laughs> no, I'm safe from sunny Florida. <laughs> oh, but. dang it. It's probably nice there. Yes. Texas, hello. Pafford Homestead. I don't have grow lights or a greenhouse, just a south-facing mm-hmm. window. Should I just forget about seed starting indoors and sow directly outside? Absolutely not. <laughs> grow your seeds no um well it'd be nice to know where you are alexander denmark okay i'm gonna be honest i'm really good with growing zones for the u.s for the most part i have no idea what growing zone you're in in denmark <laughs> um so toss that in there too at least get i mean if you're anything like our area at least get your long season plant started inside so um peppers brassic uh, brassicas as in like your um brussels sprouts they're 120 days mm-hmm. they need lots wow. of time uh tomatoes are a good one so you could at least get those things started and then count on sowing the rest outside and honestly my biggest thing with gardening is try it i mean for the most part your seed packets come with you know plenty of seeds in them at minimum you know 10 for rare varieties you have plenty to try one or two Mm -hmm. this season inside and see if you can get it going so that's always my go-to with gardening i think it it never hurts to try exactly and it's so exciting when it does work and when it doesn't you kind of know what to change next time so you've already improved your odds um but it's just rewarding i feel like yeah Yeah, definitely so Mm -hmm. give it a shot let's see it is indeed. Jeffrey, when should I start tomato seeds in Nashville area? Trying to grow black crimp. Ooh, good variety, Jeffrey. And so good place. So, Nashville, <laughs> would you be zone 7-ish? Zone 7-ish? Um, I. That means your spring comes around a little earlier. I would definitely get them going probably... February, about six weeks before the end of your, or your last frost date. So if everyone doesn't know already, ask Google. That's all you got to do. <laughs> Go on to Google and type true. in last frost date for the area you're in. And obviously pay attention to your weather. This is where a garden journal comes in like we talked about. To You know, like for this year, for instance, we had that freeze. Yeah. So late. It was kind of a weird year. I had it. Yeah. I had so much outside. You had bloom took... still coming in like November that you gave me. That's <laughs> like flowers. True. Yeah. Yeah. No. But um, so be aware that there's potential for frost to come, but that's usually when you're pretty safe on your frost date. Mm-hmm. Um, and then count backwards. So all your seed packets will, most of your seed packets will have on the back. Um, when to direct sow or when to um, start indoors. So whether it's six weeks prior, 10 weeks prior um, to your last frost date, four weeks, and it'll help you structure out your seed starting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I did see a couple questions about lights, and I know that you kind of talked to Luke about this for seed starting, because I know about grow lights for keeping plants already Sure. A lot going, but is it different for seeds? So grow lights in general, um, you go off the Kelvin unit, and mm. you can go, you can hop on Amazon and type in grow light and see, True. you know. There's it, a ton on Amazon. There are a ton. Be careful. <laughs> sure, yes. No, be careful because they may not have the criteria needed to grow your seeds well, but you also need to look at, the price range is it in your budget i mean grow yeah. lights can be really expensive mm-hmm. and especially for someone just starting out that may not be the investment you're ready to make this year down the line awesome you know that could be something you're into 
But mm-hmm. you don't have to go out and spend a million dollars on a grow light to be able to get some seeds going. Right. So, like, a good, mm-hmm. like, Luke and I were talking about this this morning, is that a good option and a less expensive option is to go get a shop light and use the fixture for your shop light, um, hoist it up, zip ties or whatever you're going to use to keep it on. And then you're just going to go look for a bulb that fits it that is a grow light. And so Mm -hmm. to do that, you're just looking for the Kelvins. Um, The lowest you really want to go is a 5,000 Kelvin uh, bulb. And all the way up to, it goes up to 7,500. So once you get way up there, you're kind of like the top of your... Where you want to go. Yeah, the top top of your Calvin. Just sit right Um, on top. (laughs) And I will say, too, something cool about that is I I think that a lot of people don't think that you can just buy the bulbs, and you can. Even, like, my houseplant bulbs, I started switching out bulbs with my light fixtures, so every time my light's on, they're grow lights anyway. So it's kind of nice because it reaches Mm -hmm. different areas of the house. Yeah, I've got lamps I just switched out, and (laughs) yeah. But it's kind of an interesting (laughs) thing to do because even... Like regular grow lights, they have the clamp, you know, and you find those on Amazon all the time. Those ones can be like $40 or so, but then you could just change your light bulbs and your light fixtures. But I love the workbench idea because you're kind of getting a nice long array of like space you can. Right, and like some of these grow lights you find online, and they're, I mean, you get them varying sizes, but like two foot and just a skinny little bulb, I mean, you're not gonna. So if you're doing a, a seed tray that's say a foot wide with that one bulb right in the middle of it, you're gonna your seedlings on the outsides are gonna be like reaching for it because that's how you know they grow toward the light. So they're gonna be reaching up to that. So mm-hmm. having a bigger the light to span a larger area is better. Yeah. What are you guys excited to grow this year? What seeds are you starting? Is anyone already getting started? Um, are you trying something for the first time inside? I'm I'm super excited to start my Brussels sprouts early. Oh, yeah. I'm like I started them too late last year and so they didn't do great. So I want to start them early and I'll do it again in like the summertime for fall. I'm playing around with it. I really like Brussels sprouts. It sounds good right now. Uh, which is weird cuz it's like 10 in the morning. Like bre- <laughs> Brussels sprouts for breakfast. I don't have it in a long time. You're odd. It's fresh. <laughs> um, I was going to say, too, I haven't seen anyone really ask too much about it, but seed starting mats, do you use those at all? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yes Yes and no. If you – seed starting mats come into play for certain seeds. Not every seed needs a seed starter. They don't need that extra warmth in the soil. Not right. everyone does. Peppers need a mat. It's like the biggest one. Get your peppers a seed starting mat. So plan your trays out that, you know, you only need so big of a mat to be able to handle your tray. Um, Tomatoes could use one if you have an extra one, but don't, it's not one that you have to push the money for if you don't don't have Mm -hmm. it, don't want to put it in your garden budget this year. Um, And other than that, peppers. Peppers. (laughs) Peppers. So, So definitely peppers. Maybe tomatoes. And yeah. then, yeah. Um, that's, that's probably really, about it. Yeah, that's yeah. really it. Peppers like the heat. The, well, not even like. They need it. They're very temp- temperamental. Like they're picky. Yeah. Picky peppers. Picky peppers. <laughs> I love a good alliteration. Right. What is it? Peter, Piper, pick a, Oh, yeah. Pick a, pick a, I can't do it. Picked a pack of peppers. I don't Pickle know. Peppers. <laughs> um, right? It's something like that's a long time. It's been a long time. Nursery rhymes, anyways. Peppers. Matthew's oh. looking to grow some peppers. Um, so chicken patty, you're growing potatoes in a feed bag this year. Have you done that before? That's super exciting. So will you just dump your feedback out, feed bag out or are you planning on making some sort of like potato door at the bottom of it? Because I've seen grow bags that have like the opening where you can like sneak potato out as you go. Road and turf, growing a bunch of peppers. I need to up my pepper game. I mean, I had pepper I plants, fresh peppers. but I know. And I want to make, I do canning and everything, and I want to make all the salsas and Aww. all the. <laughs> okay, I got my grandpa addicted to um, cowboy candy. Have you ever heard of cowboy candy? No. <laughs> so it's really basically candied jalapenos. 
and he eats it with a spoon. So I need to grow so many jalapenos. Granted, I probably should cut them off at some point. It's a lot of sugar, <laughs> but, but he yes. loves it. <laughs> so Aww. I need to grow so many jalapenos for cowboy candy. Yeah. See, I've never heard that. That's funny, but yeah. that's really sweet. I like the idea of growing for other people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, I want to be able to share the harvest, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh my goodness. Firecracker. Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> Titus Telsco. I usually grow bullnose and firecracker peppers. Exciting. I haven't even heard of those varieties. Uh, Fermented peppers. Okay, this is actually something I want to try this year. Is to make hot sauce. Do you like hot sauce? Oh, occasionally. Are you not a spicy person? I like spicy with certain things. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I want to try making hot sauce. I think it would be cool. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. I think anything that you can make on your own is yeah. interesting. And that's kind of the homestead yeah. life. Yeah. I know. There's really not life. anything. Haley's life. There's probably not anything that I'm like, that's not cool. No, I want to make it all. That's that's my Yeah, problem. I love that. I want to make it all. My dad has a decent property mm. and wants me to help him get a garden growing. Yes, road and turf. That's awesome. Let's see. Can I upcycle my reptile mat as a seed starting mat? I don't see why not. What I mean, is a reptile mat? <laughs> First of all. So reptiles are like peppers. <laughs> they like it warm. No, that's, no. I don't it just know. A, but it insulates. I'm guessing it goes, goes underneath under the tank. A warming mat. Yeah. Okay. You can also use that kind of stuff for propagation too, like a prop box. You can mm, prop yeah. box. Prop box. <laughs> no, I think with propagation is fun. Um, <laughs> but the heating mat also helps it to grow new roots and everything like that too. So kind of double yeah. purpose if you want to get it for your tomato mm. s- seeds and pepper seeds, and then you want to transition over to reptiles or to houseplant <laughs> propagation. <laughs> so many there options. You go. <laughs> it makes me want one. <laughs> I need a one. Reptile? Yeah. Oh, well, actually, I would take that, too, but uh, a heat oh, mat. Oh, a heat mat. She wants a heat mat, not a reptile, guys. Okay, so don't send them to the store. Mm, um, <laughs> you make your own horseradish, borrowed thyme gardens. That's yeah. very cool. That's impressive. What zone are you in? Um, I know it's it's a challenge for us here in 5 to be able to grow those roots. Um I know my mom did ginger. I don't know if she did horseradish, too. It's on my list to do, but you do have to bring it inside for us. Um, But very cool. Let's see. Remember to put some of your questions in all caps because it's a little bit easier to find. Yeah. Yeah. Are seed mat warming mats waterproof? Um, I think so. I would think so. I wouldn't soak it or put it in the wash. Obviously, (laughs) don't put the plug in the water. Yeah, I like don't put the plug in the water. Yeah, but if you're plastic, like a plastic material. Yeah, if you're worried about like let's say watering something with a drainage hole or something and it leaking onto the mat, that would be fine. fine. Yeah, if you're really concerned, it'll put a towel in. Yeah, it'll evaporate faster and increase the humidity, so it's not that bad. (laughs) I'm like bonus. I'm like so leak that water. No (laughs) leak. No, that's funny. Um, so I'm just getting my grow station set up in the house. Grow station. I like my it. grow mm-hmm. station. Okay. If I'm being honest. Hmm. Oh, Truth what? <laughs> I, know I, that. <laughs> I had a small seedling graveyard that did not survive Aww. and I was really sad and I didn't want to clean it up. Either way, I finally brought the containers back inside and I finally cleaned off my seed graveyard and I'm not going to have one this year. I decided. A seed They're graveyard? all gonna survive. Okay. <laughs> no, a seedling graveyard. It's so sad watching seedlings die. They're so little. I but just picture you making like little tombstones of this is Lander. <laughs> this is tomato. Anyways. 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 Okay, speaking of small things, have you ever seen the pictures where people put like little stockings on their beehives with like hundreds of baby little stockings? I think that's gonna happen next year. No, but that's really cute. Slight She's also trail. a beekeeper if you have trail. questions. But. Um, okay. Yes. Anyway, so going back to my seed graveyard, it's gone now and like life is set up. Um, I was using, like you can use so many different things for your containers. Mm -hmm. You can upcycle. A lot of people use um, K-cups. Like if you're a big K-cup user, you can take the grounds and put them in a jar and use that for your garden. And you can also take the cup that already has a little 
hole in it, you know, from being right. punctured and wow. the... It's so perfect. It's all set up. So you could go that small, but you got to consider up potting. Um, you can do solo cups. I know that's a big one. They do last a few years. Uh, you can go out and purchase pots. Uh, this is my first year purchasing some pots. I've always mm. used cups before, but I decided I'm ready yeah. to put a little more investment into it. And so I have cups and trays now. I'm guessing it's better to have plastic than like a terracotta because you want more moisture to stay in there longer for the space. Yeah, to yeah. Donate. You wouldn't. Why do you want to go terracotta? Because that would get expensive. That'd be a lot. Terracotta is cheap, but but if you're, for all the seed starting could add up. But <laughs> yeah. I don't. Know, I have a collection. I feel like it was cheap, but I'm just lying. Maybe to fair. myself. No, it's but um. Fair. But I just imagine terracotta. I used because it. You know, plants won't get waterlogged. It dries out the soil faster. And plastic, I put on ones that want to retain moisture a little bit longer or that I don't want to water as often. Is the idea transferred over to seed starting too where you want more moisture longer? Um, yeah. So for seeds, they you cannot let your seeds get dry. But you mm-hmm. also don't want to waterlog them either. So, I mean, yeah. it's kind of a happy little balance. Like I water my seedlings or my seeds to seedlings with a... A spray bottle from the dollar store. Oh yeah! <laughs> until they get strong enough to really take on some um, water, and then I do bottom watering from there. But you, um, well, by well, golly. The, the, I'm sure the mix is important too with that, so the water's not over retained or anything. Right. You definitely yeah. want a mix that is that holds water, but doesn't hold water too much. Um, so. What I use is the, and I do not ever say this right, guys. I don't. The block of cocoa, core, kior. How fancy you want to go saying it? I say core. It's just core. easier. <laughs> Luke says kior, and I felt like I had to land somewhere in the middle because, of course, he knows how to pronounce it all. Anyways. He's watching, so. He's watching. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I use those blocks. Luke does as well. We were talking about this this morning as well. And so you rehydrate them. Have you seen those? They're kind of cool. You get like a, maybe an eight by eight block, uh, like three inch deep. I don't know. Something like this. It's a solid block and you just put it in a bucket and pour water over it and it gets all fluffy. Wow. That sounds nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, um, cocoa core, core, cure. We're going with core. I'm committed. Cocoa core. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, perlite, vermiculite, and that is... And then I typically use a bit of potting soil, but with talking with Luke this morning, he likes to use compost in his, um, or humus uh, in his, and so all one part. And then, I actually learned something else this morning. Hmm. He sifts his, which I thought was really interesting. I've never sifted my seed starter. Um, I just mix it and go. Yeah. But it makes sense. I mean, having a very... um, Airiness? No, like uh, all the same. What is that? Me- Homogen- homogenous? No, I'm not going to be able to help you. <laughs> I think the term is homogenous like, or something. Where just the material is like all the same going, you know, through the whole mixture is good. Um, not having the big chunks holds water well. Um, so I'm going to sift this year, I think. So he said he sifts. He starts it by, what is it, an eighth? I had it written down somewhere, an eighth, <laughs> I think, all the way, or a quarter and then down to an eighth. Either way, he sifts it through the mm-hmm. screen. I'll get more info. And um, creates, you know, one big mixture, which honestly probably be helping in getting it well combined as well. So, yeah, definitely having a good mm-hmm. seed starting mix is a big, big key component. Big key component, yeah. Let's see. We did start a tiny debate of, um, I like that someone was like, it's coir, and then the next person was like, yeah, cocoa core. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, coir, core, all the things. (laughs) Um, Someone was asking, so what is the best soil for seed starting? Because I don't like how long the water sits there. So do you think the sifting will help the water, too, to get through easier? Well, you might just have too heavy of a mixture. So are you putting the... You're going to make me say it again. Coco, coir. Is that what we decided? <laughs> yeah. Coir? Uh, I'm going say with coir, and you can coir, and then we'll be blended. <laughs> if Perfect. we say it at the same time, it'll come out right. <clears throat> Anyways, mm-hmm. so are you putting something that is like a super um, 
free flowing medium in. So I'm thinking you're just too heavy of a mix. You gotta add something that'll help drain the water too. So that would be my suggestion to look into. Interesting. Yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> we do have a debate going. Do you recommend bottom watering all or just some of your seed starts? I bottom water yeah. most everything. Un unless when they're first seeds, I missed. And I don't necessarily know if that's right, to be honest. But I do it because I feel like, I don't know, I do. Because the seeds are on top and they don't have roots down there yet, soaking it up. It makes I don't sense. Know. It makes sense in my head. So I spray until I get seedlings and then I bottom water. Interesting. Yeah, because then the roots can it can reach up to it better. Yeah. A lot of people water or bottom water plants too that like their leaves are sensitive and they don't want to get wet or mm -hmm. different succulent types. Yeah. And yeah. It's I mean, everything loves to be bottom watered, even when you get outside. Yes, it rains. I get that. But your plants, they do not love to be watered on because it's mm -hmm. just one more thing they have to dry off. So right. bottom, bottom water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even outside. Um, okay, let's see. Can we overwinter our peppers? You know, I have heard, is it Nicola? I have heard a ton on overwintering peppers here recently in this last season the most that a lot of people have brought their peppers in and brought them around. So you could definitely do it. A big issue I've seen is that they're getting pests inside. Um, which is a shame when you bring it that far and then a pest takes it over. Yeah. Especially if you have houseplants and share the yeah. pests. Yeah. If you see anything with pests, try to quarantine it and separate it. Isolate. Triggery word. But yeah, isolate. <laughs> That's better. Try to isolate them away from other plants so it doesn't spread. Um, yeah. With outdoor gardening, you can't really just transplant away. I know. Like I saw a few people who switched out the soil it was growing in. Yeah. Um, oh, you do with house plants. Right. But, but I know garden plants don't love root disturbance. Right. I know we're house plants. So <laughs> try it. <laughs> we're going to go back to my garden motto. Try it. See what happens. Mm. Um, okay. Let's see. I like this. Uh, how long would you say you keep most seedlings in a grow house or inside? Like at what point do you look at a seed that you're starting and you say it's ready to go outside? Do you check the roots? Do you check how big it's getting per... Whatever plant it is. Um, okay. <laughs> so for things to go outside, I mean, one, the first thing you have to look at is your quiz, quiz. What did we ask Google for at the beginning of this episode? What did episode? we ask Google for? Yeah. Your last frost date, right? Oh, we got to yes, make sure the weather's on board. Yeah. We're going to make you a gardener. I, yeah. Well, I just didn't think we Googled that. We, we talked about it. it. Just, yeah, vocally yes. Googled it. Okay, I got yeah, you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, now we're on board. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I shouldn't surprise her. That's not nice. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got to look at your last frost date, of course. And then, um, I mean, size-wise, if they're tiny, they're going to take to root shock even more so. Right. You mm -hmm. want, if you're going to send it outside, it needs to be an established plant. I mean, there's no harm in letting it grow another week or two, even if you're past your frost date, just to make sure you didn't waste all... All your work. And care. <laughs> yeah. Um, for it to go outside. So you definitely want true leaves on it um, for it to be strong enough to go. Yeah. So if you're that close to the end of your frost date, I mean, as long as it's not something that takes a, the whole summer to grow, sow it outside. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it sounds like a plan. <laughs> Let's see. We have time for a couple more questions here, yeah. too, guys. Um, I see some... Why do fungus gnats always get brought up every time? We're not even talking about pests today. <laughs> okay. You guys need to stop overwatering your plants. No. I'm just, I'm kind of kidding. But She's going to throw like a PSA <laughs> at the top of our video. Don't overwater. Yeah. No, just, yeah. Try to give a break and when you're watering to your plants, something, you know, was too moist and triggered the eggs to hatch. But if you just don't water for a while, try to go as long as you can. That is the best thing. That's the thing that helps the most. Um, wait as long as you can. And right now, during the winter, your plants need less water anyway. So just hold off. Um, the dry soil is going to let the eggs die out. Um, but otherwise, you know, you can also set up sticky traps just to get any of the adult ones flying around. Also, 
uh, warm water and dish soap. You can spray that on your plants. But the watering helps a lot. And I've heard, I've, we talked before too, putting cinnamon on the top of your soil. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that it helps, but it smells nice. It's <laughs> supposed to help. Nice. Or sand. Okay, deep rant. Can I put ash from my fire pit into my I garden? Saw them. Wood ash. Yeah, you can definitely use wood ash in your garden, but um, you want to be careful uh, because it can alter the pH. Yeah, like uh, basically your chemical balance of yeah. your soil. Mm-hmm. So I always say get a soil test. True. Yeah, I mean, everyone should get a soil test either way. Just, it'll help you combat any problems before they happen in your garden. Mm-hmm. It'll kind of help you to know, too, what you want to add in, what you would want to fertilize with. You don't want to spike up the acidity if it's already acidic, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Jeff uh, Top for the win. Do you harden off? Absolutely. You have to. Do you know what hardening off no. is? All right. <laughs> so, I was like, you have to. You have to. <laughs> She's like, write this down. <laughs> No, so hardening off, I mean, so the idea of hardening off is to train your plants from one climate to another. Oh, right. Yes. So your mm-hmm. houses are a climate in itself, and obviously the outdoors is a whole nother climate. Um, things that I do that help me transition into hardening off um, is I run a fan on my seedlings, not super hard, just light. It helps simulate a wind, a breeze. Oh, yeah. Helps them build a strong structure to be able to withstand that. I um, And then oh, for hardening off. off, you take them out a little at a time. You start in the shade for an hour or so and bring them in. The next day, you go in the shade a little longer. Bring them in, into the sun a little bit. You know, back and yeah. forth until you're able to leave them out all day. Um, and then you go through the night. Work your way. It takes some time, but it's definitely definitely a practice you need to do. Otherwise, you get so much shock. Right. And yeah. it's so funny because I didn't know what this was, and I'm so proud because I do this all the time. I am so I, proud. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, house plants, like, I get um, a lot of them shipped to me because you can't find certain ones at local stores here. And except for I did discover, if you're in Michigan, Telly's Greenhouse does have a lot of rare plants. Where is it? Troy. Mm. Uh, it's so mm, dreamy. Uh, yeah, and you talked about this weekend, plant shopping. But anyways, <laughs> so, um, but when you get them shipped and stuff, they can have shock too. And so even sure. with your house plants, that's important. And starting from seed, I will say, if you do start house plants from seed, the nice thing is it's already acclimated to your climate, if you will, like your house, yeah. like whatever the humidity is. So if you are starting from seed on house plants, um, People do say that there's a great benefit in the sense that, like, it doesn't have shock coming to your house. You don't have to wean it into the light if it's been packaged for so long or that kind of thing. But, yeah, hardening off. Didn't know, but I do that. (laughs) Um, Hardening off actually comes into play for those of you who asked about overwintering plants. Uh, It's the same concept. Whether you're going from the indoor to the outdoor or vice versa, the outdoor to the indoor, you got to do the same transition um, it's a little quicker to do it from out to in, obviously, uh, but otherwise your plants are gonna. It can shock both ways. Yeah, yeah. We so, don't like shock. We don't like shock. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and take maybe one more question, and then I think we're getting pretty close to the end of our morning. How's your coffee? I know it's good. I know I'm sad because the coffee's always gone too. I know it's almost and gone. That's we, how we need know. coffee. All right. Let's see. How effective is household <laughs> compost at restoring MPK into the soil? Any favorite composting recipe proportions? Okay, so I would not personally rely on just my straight indoor compost to be what fixes my soil. Um, it's so. I mean, compost takes so much more than that. I added to my compost pile, and with the greens and uh, the greens that I put into it, you know, over the year, uh, the your brown matter, it takes more than that. I wouldn't use just straight your indoor compost. Interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I would. <laughs> you heard it here. She would not. <laughs> she she would not. All right, guys. Well. I think 
we have come to the end of our morning. I guess we'll be wrapping up. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, but we'll see you guys next week, same time, 9.30 on Tuesday. On Tuesdays. Um, so make sure you have a cup of coffee. Yeah. And you're ready to talk about houseplants. You guys can still, um, you know, once this video is closed off, leave some questions or comments in the comment section on the video. We do check it throughout the week. Yeah, we can go back. If mm -hmm. we miss your question during this, go ahead and re-add it there. I can't respond to the questions in the live stream. Right. But I can if you go and comment them on the video itself. Um, and uh, Kristen and I both like to go back and look over it and see what mm -hmm. we missed or be able to help you guys out if yeah. you have any other questions along the way. I like to look for a theme. If you guys have asked a lot about something, maybe yeah. we'll do a video on it. So your questions are important. And yeah. Okay. Thanks for joining in with us.